Hi there, hope you're having a good day and thank you for tuning in to another video. In this one, I'm going to be comparing two of the newest budget shoes by Nike and Adidas, both under $100, the KD Tray 510 and the Harden Step Back 3. So both of them are very recent releases. If you're in the US, I don't think they're available on the Nike or Adidas website yet. The retail price should be $90 for the KD Tray 510 and $80 for the Harden Stepbacks. Some colorways, especially the Harden Stepbacks, do go for like $10 more. I honestly still don't know why they do that. I mean, it's not like they actually upgraded the materials. But anyways, both of them are the budget models as a part of their signature line. Uh, for Kevin Durant and James Harden, obviously. Lots of drama between the two last season, you know? And as usual, I'm gonna go over how each of the performance aspects compare between these two and come up with a conclusion on which shoe I think is better overall. Let's get started. Okay, starting off with the cushioning setup, I would go with the KD Tray 510. The Tray 510 has Nike Renew and Zoom Air, same with its previous version. Compared to the Bounce Missile on the Harden Setback 3, it does feel softer on feet, although not necessarily more responsive. So I'll put it this way, if cushioning is your absolute priority when you are considering a pair of hoop shoes, the KD Tray 510 is probably gonna be the best among all budget shoes. Cause you know, budget shoes usually don't have good cushioning uh, because of the little or no tech used. But this one's got a smooth transition with that nice curve shape on the also. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Step Back 3s are not a stiff shoe, but just not as good as the Tray 510s in this aspect. All right, so the traction, which I know is super important to many of you, the Step Back 3s perform better from my experience. Both traction work well in the indoor gym, but in terms of getting you to a very hard stop, the Step Back 3 works more consistently. It's actually a very squeaky shoe, and for a more shifty player who makes a lot of aggressive turns and cuts, the Step Back 3 is the better option. With the fit, both are true to size, no major issues here. Remember the Harden Volume 6, I strongly recommend going down a half size, but the step backs, you can either go true to size or down a half size if you prefer a more snug fit. Now onto the stability and lockdown, this is for sure the tiebreaker in this comparison. The Harden Step Back 3 is better, and it's kind of unfortunate because the strap on the KD Tray 510s really didn't serve any functionality to improve the lockdown. The good thing is that the strap is super thin, so it doesn't really add any weight to the shoe at all. But for lateral movements, you might feel like your toes are moving around a lot inside, so not a secure wrap around your feet. And last thing is the weight. From the looks of it, you might think the Harden Step Back 3 is lighter, but actually it's the opposite. The Tray 510s are a lot lighter at 365 grams compared to the 440 grams on the Step Back 3s. But did the Step Back 3s feel like a pair of heavy shoes on the court? Nope, so not a huge difference made here in my opinion. Overall, between these two budget shoes, which one is better? My answer will be the Harden Step Back 3. I mean, the KD Tray 510 is still a really good shoe. Uh, both are great budget options. But to summarize what I talked about in this comparison, cushioning, the KD Tray 510 feels better. Traction, the Step Back 3 is better. Stability and lockdown on your feet for like lateral movements, the Step Back 3 is also much better. Even though you can't really go wrong with any of the two, uh, the better support provided by the Step Back 3 is the big differentiating factor here. I think at some point later on, both of these will eventually go on sale. Like the KD Tray 5 is a very typical Nike outlet shoe, and the Step Back 1s and 2s, I'm pretty sure I've seen them at the Adidas outlet too. That's it for this comparison video. Please feel free to comment down below which other comparisons you'd like to see. Uh, also, this is my first time comparing two budget shoes, so let me know if I should do more of that in the future. If you want to see other budget shoes that work well on the court, I'll leave a link on the top right corner. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.